Mr. Data, Engage Dream Program. Oh, why did I get rid of Crusher? Bad idea. He was walking down the corridor of the Enterprise. Then he came to a door, which was apparently his quarters. So he proceeded to enter. When he entered, however, it was actually a holodeck. Simulating a tropical beach, he heard a girlish voice. Here, Data. Tasha. And it was the real Tasha, not a hologram. He'd noticed her attire was optimised for absorbing the most solar radiation. She was wearing nothing. I am sorry, I did not know you were alive. Oh, that was just a mistake. I didn't really die. And she smiled and sauntered over to him. And now I would like to try your functions. She kissed him. Then he looked around and noticed they were on Tasha's bunk. Data found he could re not remember any details of the experience from the moment she started to remove his uniform until they both lay satisfied on the sand. However, he knew that it had been, what was the word, enjoyable. That was wonderful, Data. What else can you do? Never mind, I'm sure I'll find out later. Did that mean Tasha liked him? He felt that humans never wanted to be close to him. Maybe they were afraid, but Tasha had implied they would see each other again. There is a concert in Ten Forward tonight. Would you like to attend with me? Why would I want to be seen in public with you, you awful robot? She smiled wickedly as an idea hit her. Ooh, you probably think I like you or something. Ha ha, too bad you won't fit in the drawer with my other dildos. He grabbed her by the neck and started increasing the pressure ever so slowly. She was not laughing now. She hit him, then kicked him, then bit him. Then with a fabulous relief, he swung his arm as hard as he could, throwing her against the wall with a sharp crack of breaking bone. The feeling vindication slowly turned into an overwhelming guilt and despair. That was his emotional state when he looked up to see Dr. Pulaski looming before him. You know you've always had emotions, even before you installed the emotion chip. I was the only one who noticed, Data, you had a circuit for bruised feelings. No! I did not have emotions, I did not. Your emotions weren't like humans. You thought they weren't good enough. It's a shame. Look at what the upgrade has done to you. He almost cried. But he was not in front of Dr. Pulaski and Dr. Seller. You knew! Why did you not explain it to me then? All of this could have been avoided! It's too late for you now, Data. Nothing you can do will make matters right. In the observation lounge, several officers waited. There were Dr. Seller. Composed as usual. Geordie, upset and shaken. Lieutenant Snurk of Security, no telling what that creature was thinking. And Deanna Troy. There's been an accident in the holodeck. Wolf has been killed. We think he overrode the holodeck safety protocols on his calsynthetics program. But in light of the murders going on around here, I can't help but think there's more involved than just a simple holodeck accident. Data stole a glance at Troy, and she seemed to be studying him closely, too closely. Oh no, she probably sensed my emotions. Oh no, she is probably sensing them now. Riker stood up and paced across the floor. These are of course very difficult times, and I thank you all for continuing to do your duties, but now find I need to reorganise my officers to fill the vacancies. Lieutenant Snurk, you will now be Chief of Security. And Data? In spite of everything, Data wanted very much to be promoted. He had watched as everyone around him was promoted repeatedly until even the hated Troy outranked him. I want you to know that I very seriously 
considered you for the post of first officer. However, during this crisis I need you to stay in your present post for maximum efficiency. Of course, you'll all know Deanna Troy. She will now be my new first officer. I wish it was under better circumstances. Boring, but clean. Unperturbed. Cold. Space was so much more simple than the machinations of human interaction. I should beam myself out there now. It would be so quiet. But that would leave the gloating Riker and his literally ass-licking hussy, Deanna Troy, happy as plans. Running the Enterprise together. Data walked aimlessly through the corridors for a while. He let his subconscious choose a path for him and ended up once again at Bruce Maddox's lab. A figure was seated at the table. Maddox. Hello, Data. Deanna was at the Vulcan Academy with me. When I heard she was to board the Enterprise at Starbase 173, I just had to come along back. Needless to say, I was surprised to find out about the break-in and about the theft of my nano-cutter. Interesting about this floor tile here. It was cut exactly in half. I mean to the nearest millimetre. The line's perfectly straight, too. I wonder why someone in a big hurry to escape would bother to do that. Possibilities. The crystalline structure of the tile might have broken in a straight line once scored. Oh, don't worry about me, Data. I'm not going to turn you in. Maybe we can straighten out your memory problem. Don't you think? Your chances are better with me than with Starfleet when they find out what you've done. Dr. Maddox, you may regret trying to blackmail me for a short time. I may what? Data slammed the wussy little scientist against the wall. It wasn't too long before the repeated assaults on the human's fragile body were too much. He let go of Maddox's shoulders, dumping him on the floor. Just then, Data realised he did not know what to do with the body. Still, everyone thought well of good old Data, their useful machine, their willing slave. Without a care, Data swaggered out of the door and back to his quarters to ruminate on his next move. At the same time, he could now hear Tasha's voice producing involuntary gasps of pleasure. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, yes, ah, uh, well. Well? Data opened his eyes with a start. It was not a fantasy he was hearing, but a voice from the next cabin. Oh, Captain, I've been a naughty girl. Shouldn't you hoist me from the yard and whip me? Anything you wish, number one. Maybe I'll whip you first, Captain Baby. Come here and... He thought if he were able, he would have vomited. He suppressed a momentary urge to rip out the wall between the cabins and make quick work of both of them. No, it would have to be more artistic to do a little planning first. Not like the Maddox debacle. But Data's positronic brain was able to come up with another brilliant plan. 